I want to walk you through a comprehensive photo shoot for one of my clients. Midwest Bale Ties is a small and growing manufacturing company in central Indiana. They're expanding their website and wanted to show people who they are and what they produce. So they came to me to help them create imagery to tell their story. My specialty is documentary commercial photography, photographing businesses and organizations in action. I help my clients show who they are and what they do. I photograph companies at work, actual employees, not models, and using available light to convey what the scene truly looks like. For Midwest Bail Ties, the first priority was these documentary action photos, but they had other needs as well. So I also took exterior architectural images of their facilities, portraits of their leadership and front office staff, and product photos to show potential clients exactly what they produce. When I'm working with a small business, I really want to be a one-stop shop for them. Now, pre-production is an important part of the shoot. So that means what are we going to do before the shoot to get ready for it? So the first thing is the shot list. Now, this is not a storyboard. I'm not planning exactly how a photo will look. I just need an idea from the clients what they need, what service lines do they want to show, what capabilities do they want to highlight, and approximately how many people or products are we talking about. First, I'm going to talk about the documentary and action photos. So what do I look for? Because the light changes so much throughout the day, I start where the light is best at the moment, unless there's something that's time sensitive that has to be done first, which there wasn't for this photo shoot. There were high windows across the north and south of the building, so this provided nice soft light coming in from the north, and then a harder, more contrasty light streaming directly in from the southern windows. I want my photos to be both aesthetically pleasing and informative. Beautiful images draw in an audience and make them want to take a closer look at the photos. But for clients, I also need to make it clear who they are and what are they doing in the images. So I look for key moments where employees are hands-on, I try to photograph through machinery to add depth and dimension to the images. I watch and wait for people to look up or look around because seeing their eyes is much more engaging in a photo. I use available light primarily for several reasons. First of all, the scene looks more like how it feels to be there. It's also less distracting and intrusive to employees. I can move around much more quickly going from scene to scene without moving gear around. And because these are active work sites, I might be focused on one scene and notice something else elsewhere that's a great moment. Maybe it's something passing through or someone doing something that's only happening one time and I need to get over there and get it. And because I'm not tied to lighting, I can move back and forth with the flow of action around me. Now, a mantra I tell to photographers looking to learn how to tell stories is this wide, medium, detail. You need these three types of photos from everything you do. The wide photos establish the scene and show what the big picture looks like. Medium photos are action and reaction, primarily focusing on what people are doing. And the detail photos bring the viewer in for a closer look. Getting physically close to subjects is a way I help people who view the photos feel like they're close too. Allowing objects to be right up next to the lens adds a lot more dimension to the images. Now for office photos, sitting at a desk working on a computer isn't a place you typically think to get interesting photos. And this is where good composition is especially important. I look to fill the frame with as much visual information as possible and have lots of depth and dimension, someone closer to me, someone further away and getting real moments happening whenever possible. So I find that kind of embracing the oddness of the situation often leads to some laughs and gets people looking and acting more natural. I'll ask what are some scenarios in which they might interact with each other naturally, such as maybe meeting one-on-one or they have like small group meetings and get people in position and kind of have them walk through that like they're actually doing it to make as natural as possible, even if I need to direct slightly. For portraits, I look for a space that has nice available light, no direct sun. Cargo bay doors at industrial sites like this tend to work very well. They let a lot of light in and kind of provide just a nice ambient light throughout the scene. I want a lot of physical space behind the subject so that there's plenty of room for the background to blur. I look for lines and shapes to incorporate in the composition. Environmental portraits work better than just a plain background for an image because that's very limiting in its final usage. A plain white 
black gray background pretty much all you can do is have like a crop tight headshot out of that but if you take an environmental portrait that lends itself to a lot more uses like if someone from the company uh, leadership is writing articles about what they do and they're going to be featured in a publication having a nice environmental portrait often leads to the image being run larger by a publication so it can get you a bigger better placement if you're using these for PR type images but it also offers that flexibility to crop it down to a smaller image to fit on websites now with portraits you know I'm never working with professional models so I like to keep it short because people are not used to having their pictures taken like this so I talk to them keep it light make dumb jokes and keep it quick because the longer it goes on, the more they're thinking about it and it starts to get annoying for them. And um, just keep it short and they're much happier <laughs> while they're taking the photos and therefore looking better in the images. For product photos, I do two different types. Most of the time, I'm only doing products within the environment that they're being manufactured or in use. So that means I'm getting them as they're made or handled or sitting in boxes ready to be packed and shipped. But sometimes for clients like this, they want to show the options that they have available for sale and they just want to get the product against a white backdrop for the simplicity. So that is what I did in this case. Now this was a six hour shoot and we ended up with over 200 action photos that I delivered and variations of portraits for seven people and variations of a dozen different products. So I was able to because I'm moving quickly, get through all of that stuff, provide a lot of options in just a little over a half day shoot. My clients are thrilled with the results and are looking forward to getting these photos online ASAP. And I hope this provides some insight into how I handle a commercial photo shoot. Please leave any questions in the comments and I will be happy to answer them for you.